And now, our feature presentation. Hey guys, it's Corey with Cast TV, and we are about to take a backstage adventure at the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. We're going to talk to some people that know exactly how this place is put together, how it's run, and we're going to look at every square inch of it. And it's sure to be, it's it's sure to be fun. So let's go check it out and see what we can learn. For coming out, we actually were excited when we heard what we were hosting everybody. There's two load areas in this attraction, but there's two identical load zones. We have an upper and lower. So what you see here with the three load areas, we have an uh, basically the same thing upstairs. So we can load from the upstairs and downstairs. We have two actually, see, magic. We have two, uh, two load vestibules for each shaft. One's an upper and lower. So while one vehicle is cycling through the attraction, doing its drop profile or going through its show profile, they're actually loading the other, so if, they're, if, they're, if they've moved out the upper, the, lo the lower is getting loaded, so we can cycle. So as this one comes back, this one's getting pushed out. I don't know if you can hear the air going by as the vehicle's cycling up and down. There's quite a bit of pressure going on going, when this is happening. In the building, if you're standing by one of the drywalls, it actually is breathing in and out. And it can be pretty startling if you don't know what's going on when the wall starts creaking and, and coming out towards you, so it's pretty spooky. But this level is the vehicle transfer level, Whenever we have to swap a vehicle out, or we actually have a, a vehicle over here we call the pig, and that simulates a cab weight, either a cab, empty cab or a weighted cab, depending on the configuration. They have to transfer it by hand. So these, the vehicles weigh almost 3,000 pounds. They have to push them out by hand, jack it up, turn the casters, then slide it out of the way, bring this pig or if another vehicle they're gonna swap it out with, then slide it into the position and then push it in. That's all done manual. This is the, I'm not sure what we call this, the hallway scene. And there's a lot of things that go on here that you don't, don't actually notice. There's, we have a hallway that shoots off to the side. There's a glasser actually, I don't know if you can see the outline of it, it's kind of at a 45 degree angle, because the hallway that we actually shoot, one of the scenes shoots off to the side, from the side, and that's some of the images you see. So we'll go ahead and start it. So right now this image that you're seeing now is actually being projected from the side on this piece of glass. So the projector that's actually projecting it is right here. So it's kind of a, you know, smoke and mirrors. So if I were to stand here, you're seeing me in the same hallway, but you're actually thinking you're looking out that way. So this might look like just any other ordinary room with huge engines in it. We've all seen it before. But the thing that makes this different is we're actually 13 floors or so above the ground at the very, very top floor of the, uh, the Hollywood Tower Hotel. So luckily we have an expert with us to tell us, tell us a little bit about this. So Louie, these big, huge blue things, <laughs> tell us about them. What are they? What, just run with it run with it well actually we've got the three drive units for the three shafts um, if we were to break it down I mentioned earlier about the big brakes that we have up here which we have eight of them um, I don't know if you could see them we've got you could actually see four of them half of them um, I mentioned earlier are 2,000 horsepower rated motors which are coupled to each drum we've got two sets of drums one drum goes directly to the top of the vehicle the other one goes down to the, to the counterweight frame takes off from the counterweight frame below that, goes underneath, 
to the bottom of the hoist way around a compensation ship up to the bottom. So that's why I mentioned that pull-pull system. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, there is like when you when you're coming by your backstage, you see this whole power plant. Correct. What? How much energy does it take to operate this? I mean, not maybe specific numbers, although you might know that. I don't know, but like, is it massive? Well, each motor is about a 600. It takes about 600 volts. Uh, we actually bump that up to almost 1,200 volts when we get those surges of speeds. So each one, if they're all running at the same time, draws a big, pulls a big draw from the city. So that's why we have this little substation over here to supplement that power that we're using over here. So yeah, if we're, you know, when you talk about power, it's a lot of power going into these things when they're running. All right, well, we started at the bottom and now we're at the top. So basically, we've seen every inch of this on uh, this Cast TV backstage adventure. Thank you so much, Louis, for showing the, showing us everything there was to see from the engines to the elevator to, uh, it's crazy. In fact, I have, uh, I live in a house with a backyard. I'm thinking of building one of these in the backyard. So it's been an adventure, it's exciting. I'm thinking of rappelling off the side, actually. Maybe another episode, we'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you later, bye. At Disney MGM Studios, the Imagineers set out to create their most technologically complex ride to date. The Imagineers wanted to combine a haunted hotel setting with a dramatic sensation of falling. The result was a haunted elevator ride with a mind of its own. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. There's nothing more fearful, I think, for many people than the notion of an elevator you know, out of control. Creating this thrill ride required groundbreaking technology, combining two different types of rides into one. It was one of the most ambitious from a technical standpoint that we'd ever undertaken. If you think about a normal ride, it's one ride system. Uh, we have multiple motions. The ride begins with a smooth ascent. But then the doors open and the ride vehicle moves horizontally into the dark corridors of the haunted hotel. We have a completely different ride system that moves them horizontally in the attraction. Creating the horizontal movement was easy enough. Disney turned to a technology they'd used before to control vehicles without operators, tracks, or rails, wire-guided vehicles. The vehicle is actually equipped with a sensor plate underneath here that rides very close to the, to the floor surface, and it picks up computer signals from the wire uh, to guide the vehicle, wire guidance system, to guide the vehicle along its path. It tells it uh, speed, direction, um, you know, it reverses uh, forward, it actually even turns to the side. So uh, there's a lot of signals that can be transmitted between the two uh, that actually tell the vehicle how to move in its, its positioning. Then suddenly, the ride lurches into a series of hair-raising lifts and drops. We built this ride system that would move you up and down very quickly. We take this very controlled ride system and make you think it's out of control. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror opened on July 22, 1994 to piercing screams and rave reviews. But the designers couldn't help asking, how can we plus it? One of our executives asked, how difficult it would be if we wanted to make an adjustment on the ride profile. And our programmer said it wouldn't be that difficult at all. And suddenly a light bulb went off and we realized, wait a minute, we have created an attraction that can be reprogrammed. In 2002, Disney unveiled a fourth version of the ride. They called it T4, adding the ominous tagline, the tower is in control. 
two years, countless calculations, and several computer upgrades in the making, T4 includes six to eight dizzying drops and lifts of various heights. But the exact number and the sequence are generated randomly inside the computer. Each ride is different. Not only is the motion changed, but all the show elements are changed. You'll see different shows, you'll see different audio, uh, different lighting techniques. The ride quickly became one of the most popular in all of Walt Disney World. Sunset Boulevard. The past lives here. In the studio sound stages and movie palaces, in the stately mansions of movie land royalty, a glittering ribbon of dreams, a fantasy of light and shadow. Yes, Hollywood has its dark side, too. Consider the Hollywood Tower Hotel, a legendary fallen star. Its elegant silhouette casts a shadow that stretches to us across the generations. What dark secrets lie beyond its doors, in the dusty hallways, the empty rooms? You'll soon know, for we're all about to enter. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron, and this isn't Hollywood. It's the Disney MGM Studios at Walt Disney World in Florida. I'm here to check out Disney's newest, fastest, strangest thrill ride, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. The Twilight Zone. Na, 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 na. I just love that show, and the Disney people have just opened a brand new attraction. It's a white knuckle screamer that throws the doors of the fifth dimension wide open, and it drops you like a rock from the 13th floor straight into your worst nightmare. The whole thing is set up like an episode of The Twilight Zone, only this time, you're the star. I absolutely love it, and I'm gonna show you how they did it. Studios, Walt Disney World, Florida, the making of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Wow, look at this. This is amazing. We are in the lobby of the legendary Hollywood Tower Hotel. No one has set foot in this place since one bizarre night more than 50 years ago when something unexplainable happened. It was way back in 1939, back when Hollywood was really something to sing hooray about. It was the golden age when Tinseltown worked hard and partied even harder. It was the year of some of Filmland's greatest classics, like Wuthering Heights, Gone with the Wind, and The Wizard of Oz. The film community lived the good life. The good life never got better than at the elegant, some might say decadent, Hollywood Tower Hotel. That is until one dark, rainy Halloween night. A freakish lightning storm seemed to hang the tinsel on Tinseltown. Anyone who was anyone was partying at the hotel, none of them suspecting what ominous fate lay ahead. Legend has it that when those five people stepped into that elevator, it took them up to the 13th floor. Pretty strange for a hotel with only 12 floors. When lightning struck, the awesome power of that mysterious force blew out an entire wing of the hotel and sent the elevator plummeting at an incredible speed. Five unsuspecting guests vanished into the unknown. Somewhere along the way, those five unfortunate souls 
left the elevator and entered the twilight zone. Anyway, they closed the hotel that night. Now, some people say the spirits of those five people still walk the eerie hotel corridors to this day. Others say the Bellman survived. But come on, <laughs> you saw that thing fall. I mean, nobody could survive that. But it was a great story, and Disney thought it was a great story, too. In fact, it was so incredible, they recreated the Hollywood Tower Hotel brick by brick here at the Disney MGM Studios, just to plunge you into an experience that would last a few terrifying moments, but feel like an eternity. The decision to build a thrilling state-of-the-art attraction of this magnitude came from Michael Eisner, the head of the Walt Disney Company. Our parks, our concepts, our movies are not for children, and they're not just for adults, they're for everybody. And even though this is a monumental thrill ride, it is one that you feel totally safe and that you have a more than just a thrill experience. You have the intellectual experience of going into the Twilight Zone. An attraction like the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror doesn't just appear from out of nowhere. There's a large group of talented, dedicated people whose job it is to come up with rides and attractions that are more thrilling, terrifying, bigger, faster, scarier than any others in the entire world. They let their imaginations run free and test their engineering skills to the limits. That's actually how they got their name. You see, they took the words imagination and engineering and combined them to form one easy to remember word. Engine imager Asians. Image engineer aiders. Asian imaginations. Imagineers. This very special group bears the Disney name. That's a lot to live up to. Walt Disney Imagineering has a long tradition of combining thrilling rides with story and drama. Space Mountain, an incredible race through the galaxy. Star Tours, a zoom through space on a runaway star speeder. And on Splash Mountain, you hold on for dear life as you ride a log flume down a raging river. Now, to create a great attraction, Disney's Imagineers needed a great idea. One way of uh, looking at a blank piece of paper is it's the most frightening thing in the world because there's nothing on it. You have to put a mark on it. Another way, and the way we try to get people to think around uh, Imagineering, is that a blank piece of paper is the most exciting thing in the world because there's nothing on it. And you can let your imagination fly in any direction. And that's what happened with the Tower of Terror. Uh, once we really honed in on, on how we were going to do this attraction, and then uh, came up with the idea of linking it to Rod Serling's great stories, uh, The Twilight Zone. I think that was the magic that brought it all together because uh, it gave us a whole framework to hang uh, all the ideas on. Once they had the concept, it was time to add a compelling story. Rod Serling every week said he unlocked the door to another dimension, to the fifth dimension. So we thought, we'll take you there. This is something he couldn't do. He, he showed stories about this place. But we thought, if we could actually put you in the Twilight Zone, this would be something unique. Invariably, the stories dealt with ordinary people in ordinary situations that have an extraordinary thing happen to them. So this idea of walking into a hotel and confronting an elevator that takes you to another dimension, that that's the twist that provides us a, a, a way, a doorway into the Twilight Zone. We also know that most of the people visiting the Disney MGM Studios are staying in the hotels and facing elevators and having this experience every day. So 
we wanted to twist that little common experience of theirs, um, a device, you know, known to be used on the Twilight Zone, and make that the basis, you know, the starting point of this supernatural story. So it just fits in so nicely with the themes that Rod Serling dealt with consistently. Now, after you've got your story, you want to bring it to life, give it some soul and energy, and see what you're getting into. Now, that's where the storyboard artists come in. They are the middlemen between legend and execution. My job here at Imagineering is a show designer. And what we do mostly are, are drawings, paintings, storyboards, models, whatever it takes to get the concept and communicate it across. The creative team uh, in the beginning of Tower of Terror had dozens of brainstorming sessions. During those sessions, when we're talking and having discussions, I'm sitting with a sketch pad making roughies, trying to bounce these ideas back off visually to the people at the table and to put it in a form that uh, is a shorthand, a visual shorthand that we can reference later. guiding intentions behind the attraction was that we wanted to reflect the opulence of 1939 Hollywood, but show it in a state of neglect, show it in a state of disrepair. If you came into a once elegant room, you should now be able to smell the dust and, and mustiness of it. There should be signs of wear and tear, a patina that had grown with age on something that was once very, very shiny, very glorious. One of the most satisfying things for me as a designer on the project is to see it go from concept discussions to all kinds of sketches and paintings to seeing it become a real environment that people can walk through, that you can see their expressions, uh, enjoying it and experiencing this story. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror isn't only Walt Disney World's newest and tallest landmark, it's an absolute work of art and the ultimate multimedia thrill attraction. It's almost 200 feet tall, and they used over three million pounds of steel, over 145,000 cubic feet of concrete, and 27,000 roof tiles to build it. The biggest uh, challenge we had on this project was developing uh, a, an attraction that was going to push the technological limits of what we know as a, the attraction business today. One of the most interesting challenges of building an attraction for Disney is that we try so hard to make everything look like it's not. Um, we, we build a brand new facility and then we come in right behind it and we try to make it look 65 years old. Disney prop department and set dressers made everything look just like it did the last night this hotel was open. There are real letters in the mailboxes. Hmm. Did you know that in 1939 a stamp was only two cents? Hey, it really rings. <laughs> you rang, sir. Uh, I, I was just playing with the bell. Sorry. <laughs> That couldn't be the same bellman that... No. <laughs> ah, well, hey, look at this. This is the same pen the guests use to sign in. Hmm, wonder what's in here.
This place is really starting to spook me. Part of the challenge of working on the interior of the Tower of Terror was not only creating a time period, but capturing it a short while after it had been built and frozen in a moment in time as everyone vanished. So throughout the lobby, we have little stories that can be seen and are told through a matter of props and set dressings of what people were doing at that moment. And researching the time period, we had to really uncover what was popular at the time and what people likely would have been doing in that hotel when it finally shut down. Right here. See how it's set up? What we're trying to capture in this scene is a Mahjong game in progress, which was very popular at the time. And we have a coffee set up. We have a set of flowers that was delivered with it that has long been dead. All of the lighting fixtures in the Tower of Terror that were provided for us by Character Lighting were acquired from a building of similar size, age, and style as our hotel here. The 1920s pattern on the tapestry was our guide for the rest of the colors in the room. At the end of the sofa, we had a visitor in from France with his French-English translation book um, for some of the harder words in his new American newspaper. There was a lot of activity that last day in 1939. We had a very wealthy person checking in at the time with a very swank set of luggage. He has just signed in the registration book and is now leaving a note at the registration desk telling of a friend arriving later and to please hold their room. Another guest had just checked in and has obviously come in from a much colder climate. He's taken off his overcoat and hat. He's already received his key and newspaper in the hotel, has filled out his Hollywood postcards to send off to others out of town. In this scene, we've created the following story. It's a couple having their last bottle of champagne in the tower before the incident. You can see where she was sitting down. She has laid down her purse and gloves and neatly folded her napkin and although her champagne glass is dry she still has lipstick on her glass and where he was sitting he just sort of wrinkled his napkin and tossed it on the table picture if you will a group of ordinary high school kids they're out for a night of fun at the disney mgm studios Little do they know, they're about to be thrust into the darkest corners of their imaginations to become players in their very own episode of The Twilight Zone. Like all those brave enough to enter the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, these guests will be retracing the footsteps of those faithful five who disappeared long, long ago. But beware. Once those doors close, there's no escape except through the fifth dimension. That took the smirks off their faces, and it's only the beginning. It's a long way down, but they'll be all right. That thing was just inspected in 1939. Submitted for your approval, back in 1939, five people took this same elevator and were never heard from again. <laughs> but of course, that's just a silly legend. I can't wait to talk to these guys and ask them what they thought. Going up. <laughs> I don't think so. In this business, to take four and a half or five years of, of your life and uh, to uh, start with a, a just, it may just be a line or maybe a sketch, and then four and a half or five years later to find people uh, laughing and, and screaming 
and uh, yelling and saying, wow, that was uh, fabulous. That was worth traveling from Ohio uh, just for that. And I think that's the satisfaction that most of us live for. So one of our goals was to make this ride a scary ride. We wanted to stay true to the spirit of the Twilight Zone. And in keeping with that, we wanted also to have a sense of wonder, a sense of mystery to it, as opposed to just horror. Uh, just as a thunderstorm can be very frightening and disquieting, it also has a sense of mysterious beauty to it as well. And we wanted the guests to walk away with that. So we have salted throughout the attraction very subtle references sometimes, sometimes not so subtle references, to episodes of the Twilight Zone TV series. Um, we acknowledge the, the immense debt that we owe to Rod Serling and the Twilight Zone and the people who created it um, for providing us with this wonderful mood and this wonderful story. So we wanted to sort of pay homage to that. And uh, I think after repeated viewings and, uh, of the attraction, you'll, you may start to find little mementos of your favorite episode somewhere in the attraction. So keep your eyes open. So what have we learned? That Disney knows what they're doing when it comes to giving you the thrill of a lifetime? Well, yes, but we've always known that. What we didn't know is that when you get into an elevator, the floor you choose is not necessarily the floor you end up on. And the next time you need a hotel reservation, if you want an experience that you'll never forget, make sure the hotel you choose is the four-star rated Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. vehicles provided by National Car Rental, the official car rental company of the Walt Disney World Resort. Green means go.
خیلی سازی Je suis toujours à la recherche de livres. En fait, j'essaie de trouver une lampe pour en établir. Ça serait une hein autre. Ça se super ça. Caniment 30. Euh, euh, qui est qu plutôt une bonne gueule, je ne sais pas ce que vous en pensez. Elle est pas mal. Donc, des euh, robes extras, vous avez Extras Alors le truc, c'est que ça va, on, on en a, mais c'est plus grand. Si on met juste à, euh, à droite de la, de, la, de la caisse à tiroir. Non, non, sur la caisse. Sur la caisse Sur la caisse à tiroir. Ouais.
utilizing your species. Inside those walls, you will find some of the rarest objects in the galaxy. While he has taken the Tuvan collection to planets all over the universe, the Collector has been most curious about what's happening here. Very curious lately. More like obsessed. He can't stop talking about Terra! So, tonight, the Collector has a tremendous surprise for everyone. You will be allowed into the innermost sanctum of his fortress to see his newest and most prized collection, the Guardians of the Galaxy! <laughs> but first, in a manner most befitting this occasion, it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage a very special Terran, who has come to celebrate the grand arrival of the Collector's Fortress. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chairman Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, Bob Chapek. Thank you all for joining us, and thank you for that colorful introduction. Wow. We're thrilled that the Collector chose Disney California Adventure as the home of his fortress, and that we were given the distinct honor of hosting this newest exhibit. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout has arrived. You know, it's, it's the park's first attraction that's inspired by this action-packed superhero universe. And in true Guardians of the Galaxy fashion, it's full of the irreverent humor that's infused throughout both Smash It films. And with Rocket in control, you're in for one heck of a ride. This jaw-dropping experience is only possible because of the brilliant and creative minds across the Walt Disney Company. And I would like to recognize a few of them. Marvel's Kevin Feige and Joe Quesada. Their insight into the Guardians and their unique personalities really helped shape the collector's exhibit. And of course, Disney Parks, Bob Weiss and Joe Rohde. And their team of Imagineers who brought it to life in this spectacular way. Thanks to them and many others, we're able to unveil the fortress for all of you tonight. Now this is a momentous occasion, but it's just the beginning of what will become an even bigger superhero presence at Disney's California Adventure. Yeah. And with the strong partnership between Marvel and Walt Disney Imagineering, we're very excited with what's to come. And it is sure to please Marvel fans hungry for more magic at Disney Parks. Now I'd like to introduce the visionary writer and director of both Guardians of the Galaxy films. He was also a great partner in creating this attraction, working with the star-studded cast on the annex you'll see inside. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in welcoming a very important Terran, James Gunn. Thank you, Bob. Hey, everybody. Hey. This is exciting for me. This is the best time of all my entire life. I, uh, you know, a lot of kids, when they're, they're, they're kids, they dream of being writers and directors, and they dream of winning Oscars. For me, I dreamed of this, of having a ride at a Disney theme park based on movies that I to So I am really happy to be here. I have had an amazing time working with the Imagineers over the past year and a half or so to create something special for all of you. I think that people have really enjoyed watching Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 for the past few weeks in theaters. And this is a chance for all of you to be able to come into the world of the Guardians to experience them firsthand, what it's like to be with them, and to, to help them out of this jam that they're in with uh, the collector that's no good jerk. Uh, but I just want to say, you know, when I was a little kid, I, my earliest memories uh, are when I was four years old, coming to Disneyland, riding, you know, Haunted Mansion and Mr. Toad's Wild Ride and Dumbo. <laughs> And these are the greatest memories I had, and it makes me so excited that families and friends are going to be able to come here to the park and experience with their families and their friends what I was able to experience here and through the Guardians of the Galaxy. 
And so, without anything else, I would like to introduce to you a few of the stars of Guardians of the Galaxy. First of all, she plays Mantis, Pom Clementine.
Hi, I'm Joe Rohde, and I'm here to tell you about this exciting new addition to Disney California Adventure. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. It takes you into the world of Guardians of the Galaxy in this really immersive, exciting experience that features the really quirky and beloved characters from the film in a whole new narrative that no one's ever seen. We're working with everybody on this, with Joe Quesada and Kevin Feige. We've got James Gunn, the director from the film. And it's this incredible team of people coming together to make this really, really exciting attraction. The setting is a kind of warehouse fortress power plant where the collector keeps all of the objects that he's brought from all around the universes. Once we enter, we're kind of in a museum. All this stuff is all around us in cases, in vitrines, and in there now, imprisoned, are the guardians of the galaxy. Rocket is enlisting our aid in helping the guardians break out of this place. This all leads to the same kind of like insanely fun rocketing up and down ride experience that we have today. But the framing and the setting and the pacing and the timing all completely altered to feed this really very funny, very exciting, very irreverent story. Music plays a big role in Guardians of the Galaxy as it does here. So as the chaos unfolds, as we zoom up and down, we're doing this to the tune of, of course, great rock and roll. We have multiple ride profiles, multiple scores, multiple action. You just don't know what's gonna happen. And it's the first in what is gonna become a whole new universe in Disney California Adventure. All of this is happening as we speak. As things emerge and as things develop, I'll be back to tell you more about all this stuff that's gonna happen uh, as we go forward and we make this really, really cool, really wonderful addition to Disney California Adventure. I know, right, carefully scrutinize each and every beast that comes to me from different parts of the galaxy, and I've got to let's you this guy! Hearing his incessant blathering on a constant loop was big motivation for me to escape. Ow! Ow! That was not part of the plan! What? <laughs> of course I escaped! For those of you who have not been paying attention, the name's Rocket. One of the guardians of the galaxy. The smart one. Listen up. He's going to put you on a gantry lift for your tour. I'm going to sneak on top of your lift and take us all the way to the big old generator control room. I'm going to blast that thing and destroy all the control systems, which will open up every cage in this freak show and free my friends. Our buddy Mantis is in the getaway ship waiting for my signal, and then we'll be on our merry way. But this plan won't work unless you help. I don't have clearance. My hands don't scan. Yours do. If you raise your hands, I get the clearance and the chaos begins. <laughs> it's a foolproof plan. Huh. Now we're going to take this. Now move it.
and you check into a deserted hotel on the dark side of Hollywood. Make sure you know just what kind of vacancy you're filling before you find yourself a permanent resident.